All right, guys. Um, we're gonna be covering our review of Headless Horseman Hayrides. So we visited Headless Horseman Hayrides on Saturday, October 5th. Um, they're located at 778 Broadway Route 9 West in Ulster Park, New York. Um, they have 10 attractions. Um, this is in the order that we visited them. Obviously, when we talk about them individually, we'll repeat this again, but just for your knowledge, the 10 attractions in chronological order are A Deal with the Devil, which is their theme for their hayride this year. Um, every year it's different. Um, number two is Lunar Motel, that's a haunted house. Then you have Glutton's Slaughterhouse and Glutton's Diner. Those are also haunted houses. They're kind of a little, um, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that when we do the review. Um, I'll just say the names now to make things easier. Um, then number four is, oh, wait a minute. Number four is Evil Reaping, the Dark Harvest. That's the corn maze. Then we have Mama Rosie's Swamp Shack. That's a walkthrough. Then we have Horseman's Tomb, which is a haunted house. Um, then we have, hold on one second. Dr. Dark's Black Spider Circus Sideshow, that's a walkthrough. Then we have Nightshade Nursery and Greenhouse, that's a haunted house. Um, then there was The Feeding, which is a haunted house. And 10 is The Two Raven Manor, and that's also a haunted house. So again, that's 10 attractions. Um, they also have five gift shops. Um, their gift shops are amazing. Uh, I bought a bunch of stuff and I had a very long list of all these items that I also wanted to purchase that I could not afford to because I would have been broke. That's how many that I really, really liked. So they have a lot of vintage, like unique Halloween items. Um, I can post some pictures, obviously, when we do our written review on the website. Their stuff is amazing. I've not seen anything like this at um, gift shops, at haunted houses before. Their gift shops are amazing. Like I said, they have five of them, so they have a vast variety of all kinds of really unique stuff. Um, so on top of that, uh, they also have four eateries, which include um, a couple bakeries, uh, a place to buy just their apple cider donuts which are very yummy and then they also have like a regular eatery that has you know uh what did they have they had fried foods of all different kinds a couple different like appetizers um sandwiches wraps different kinds of burgers like specialty burgers not just regular like plain old hamburgers cheeseburgers um they had fried oreos they had um fried Snickers. They also had a couple different drink options. Um, in the bakery section, they had apple crumb cake. They had pumpkin pie. They had amazing brownies that I get every year and Matt ate basically all of it before I could have very some. Good. Very good. It's okay. The, the brownies are so good. I get yes. them every year that I've gone to Headless Horseman. They're big brownies. They're too. huge. Like, there was a smaller one next to the one that we picked and I was gonna get the smaller one because I wasn't noticing like, hey, you're paying the same price for like a large brick of brownie versus like a smaller one. Um, a, a lot of them are just very, very big and they're like, oh, which one do you want? So like, <laughs> Matt was like the big one, duh. So <laughs> we got the very large brownie and it was very, very good. Um, they also have like cookies and hot apple cider which their hot apple cider is so good um highly highly recommend um but yeah so they have a huge facility they have so much space they have animatronics and large like beautifully done displays throughout their um grounds um they do things really really big at headless horsemen like they will construct buildings that they will then decorate throughout the park and I'm not talking about in the attractions yet I'm talking about just in like the park where you walk around and just hang out they have a lot of picnic benches where you can sit down and just chill and 
hangout. Um, they have live entertainment. They have an illusionist. His name is Ryan Dutcher. He's been there for quite a while now. It might be somewhere between four to six years. I don't know the exact number, but I'm sure if you visit his website, you will see if you are interested. Um, we'll go into Ryan a little bit more um, when we get to talking about some of the haunts. Um, because we had some interactions and got to have some of his shows in between our experiences for the evening. Um, I really don't like how dark it is in here. It's really, I mean, unless I we know. start putting these lights on. Oof. And then we're, like, really bright. Yeah. I could put one of them on. Yeah, one of them. No, one not on. that one, that one. Yeah, that That's one's better. Right. Yeah, because it's not okay. gleaming on your face as much as mine. No, yeah. All right, guys. You're good. Should be all right. Um, so, yeah. We're going to start talking a little bit about their attractions now. Um, so the cool thing about Headless Horsemen is they have a lot of themes throughout their attractions and a lot of them are pretty unique. The cool thing about their hayride is they typically have a story that they tell throughout the course of your journey on the hayride. Um, every year they have a different story. It's very elaborate. Um, they have a narrator that tells you the story as you're on the hayride and you stop at each scene and the story is acted out through the sets that you go through. Um, very, very well done. Their actors are a lot of fun. The stories are very well done. This year, their theme was the deal with the devil. Um, it had a lot to do with the Headless Horseman and I guess the deal that he had done, right, to, um, do you remember more about, like, the story specific details? Yeah, the, um, the guy on our wagon, the narrator, because there's a specific narrator for each, um, for each wagon, and he sat at the front with his little you know, microphone thing there and they had the um, they had the speakers on the on the wagon he was telling a story about how he needed to meet with somebody to I can't remember off the top of my head if it was to get his soul back mm -hmm. or he was trying to pledge his soul to the yeah. devil and then there was a plot twist part way when we finally meet um, said devil don't give away too too much but oh yes yeah, Sorry. not too, too much, but just a premise of basically yeah. what it was. So it was like making a deal with the devil and then getting your soul back. Um, and then all the, the journey that he goes through along the way, our narrator. And then, like, I don't want to give it too, too much away. But there's some cool things that happen throughout the story that are twists and turns along the way. Um, other than that, their sets on the hayride were phenomenal, right? Like, <laughs> basically, as I was explaining, in their midway area, um, where you can kind of hang out, they also construct large buildings and structures throughout their attractions. Um, so on the hayride, they have a lot of those. They have full out houses that they have constructed that look so beautiful that you could want to live in them. That's how amazing they are. There was this one in this one particular section that I said to Matt, like, I want to own that house now. Like, it is gorgeous. And I'm sure you guys will see also, um, if you decide to go out that way, just how beautifully constructed the sets are. Um, they have a lot of really, really cool animatronics, props. Um, like I said, their actors are awesome, very well done. The story is very well put together. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite scenes in particular. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to ruin it for you guys. But I really I, like the town scene in that. The town scene is beautiful, like so the, well done. The, the creepy, houses, the oh. creepy kids on the porch on some of the houses. Yeah, yeah. They have a really cool, like, haunted um, school house scene that has a lot of different elements and details in it. Um, I personally love anything pumpkin oriented. So they have this really cool, like dragged out pumpkin scene. Um, so I always love a good pumpkin scene. Um, they have a really cool graveyard scene, which has a really cool segment in it that I don't want to ruin for you guys, but that was one of my favorites. Very, very cool, like special effect that was done in there. My favorite um, was probably the devil scene. Oh yeah, that um, one was really good. On the other side, there's yes. a guy getting tortured. Yes. And in that scene, well, actually scattered throughout the haunt, like what we've been noticing across the board this year is a lot of haunts have some really good pyro, and they had very good pyro in 
their haunt as well. Um, very, very well done. Um, so that's kind of my take on everything. Like I said, it was amazing. Um, I want to see if Matt has any different things to say other than what I said about it. Um, you guys heard my side, what I enjoyed. So, Matt, what did you enjoy about it? Um, that was uh, the first place we had gone to this year. And I think for me, the second place overall where you are uh, sitting on the hayride with your legs dangling off. Uh, oh, yes. Uh-huh. I didn't even mention that. There's, yeah. there's all different types of hayrides, like mm -hmm. we mentioned in a recent uh, review of Sleepy Hollow in, in Newtown, Pennsylvania. With that one, they actually have, like, a cage around their wagon. Mm -hmm. In this one, no cage, no nothing. You are yeah. sitting right there. Your legs are dangling off. It gives it that extra layer of, you know, you're, you're exposed. Uh, even though they're not, you know, they're not coming into contact with you, they... Uh, they do keep a, a very, you know, fair and, and safe distance away from you. Um, you know, it's it's something where it adds that little extra, that, that little extra bit of oomph to it. Um, mm -hmm. And the the story as well, the fact that there was a continuous story that was told from start to finish in the hayride was something that I really liked because the fact that you know I we, I hadn't seen that before. Um, think I'd ever seen that in terms of it's a not continuous common. story. It's not really just not. a theme that they kind of base everything off of and they just kind of go every which way with it like oh it's haunted and yeah. like here's haunted clowns and then oh wait here's haunted you know demons and there's uh, you know whatever torture medieval mm -hmm. you know, redneck wild west or anything. There's a specific story that was told consistently throughout um, and every single scene the, uh, the the set work, the actors, the costumes, and everything fit that. Yeah. And that's a task in and of itself, Agreed. especially for the large scale that this haunt operates on. Absolutely. Um, to have that much attention to the small little details on that, to come up with all the different characters' names and or backstories and where their story is going to go and Absolutely. you know all that that has to take a lot of trial and error and things like that are always appreciated in my book absolutely um i'm trying to think um probably i would also want to point out that for the hayride the very last scene that you go through before you get off the hayride and go get on the line for Lunar Motel it was really really well done it was very very cool it was a very dramatic finale um, but in like the best way um, other than that that's probably the last thing I want to highlight about the hayride it's very well done it's honestly something you really just need to see for yourself um, it's one of the most unique hayrides that you can experience out there I really haven't come into contact with any that I can think of right now that have a storyline that they take you through like i explained earlier um it's it's very very well done um so that's the hayride in a nutshell um moving forward our next attraction is lunar motel which is a haunted hayride um so you get off the hayride and you get in the line for the next one there's a little photo op in there so you can get your picture taken and purchase it later on if you like um, and also, the, there's a bathroom area. If you oh, need oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Big, big, big selling point. So, you know, if you've gone to haunted attractions a bunch of times, usually they either have a bundle of bathrooms in like the front of the haunt or the back of the haunt all in one area. And then like a couple scattered throughout the different sections of the haunt, depending on how big it is, obviously. Um, and something that we've run into uh, at several different haunts is that, you know, sometimes you're, you're waiting online for a haunt or, you know, you have to use the bathroom and the haunts are really, really spread out and the bathrooms are scattered all over the place. And something really, really cool and unique about Headless Horseman is they actually have a couple bathrooms and a wash station. A hand wash station. Yeah, yeah, like a legit, like you can wash your hands and dry your hands and you know, be clean. And that was just part <laughs> way through. That's not even in the midway area. That was not after you get done one haul uh, yep. before you go to the next one. Yep. Very thoughtful of them. Yeah, very, very, um, very, very cool of them. Uh, very uncommon. So that was awesome. And then you get off the hayride, you get on the line, like I said, get your picture taken. And as we were waiting online, 
Um, oh, I also forgot to mention we had VIP. <laughs> As per usual, um, we just do that. It's much easier. Um, we never have to wait in line. A while to get exactly. somewhere. It, it makes up for the fact that you know we're, we're driving two to three hours one way to get to some place. So mm -hmm. um, that helps us make up for that. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. I'll shut up. I'll let you get to the motel. <laughs> um, yeah, VIP is just awesome. You never have to wait online, um, and if you do, it's it's very limited time that you're on there. We like to do that with our our haunts across the board because it's just. It's easier, and we're usually tired by the time we get there with our long drives. It's just, it's more efficient, especially on high volume nights. You really don't have to wait very long. We always, always recommend it. We've never had an issue in VIP. Um, we've had issues being non-VIP, so always, always will recommend that. Um, so for the Lunar Motel, we're on the line, we're waiting, and all of a sudden, um, the illusionist Ryan Dutcher pops up. Now, I know who he is because I've been to Headless Horseman many times. I recognized him immediately. Um, the difference is, at least when the last time I personally was at Headless Horseman, Ryan had his own stage over in the midway section by the feeding and the two ravens, and that's where he kind of did his performance every half hour or hour, however frequent it was. Um, this was the first time I ever saw him out in the attraction area performing. Um, so he started talking to the crowd. He started explaining what he was going to do and how he was going to do an illusion right then and there. And we actually have it fully recorded. It is live on our Facebook here if you want to take a look at it. But we were all, we will also download that, put that on our YouTube and include it in our actual finalized review um, later this week. So you guys can see it again if you're viewing this video on our website. Um, so... Ryan was explaining what he was going to do. Basically, he was saying that he was going to be put into a straitjacket, and there was this giant crane that had spikes on it that was hanging upside down, and that he had to get out of the restraints in a specific amount of time. Otherwise, the restraints would close on him. Um, keep in mind, they were also lit on fire, and they would smack him right in the middle. And I'm not going to ruin anything for you, but watch the video. Very well done. Um, Ryan's amazing. Um, we highly, highly recommend checking him out. We're going to circle back and talk about him again when we get to um, the feeding and the two ravens. Um, because we experienced another one of his shows. But very, very cool. I don't know if he does any more... Um, illusions than that scattered throughout the haunts that just so happens to be the only one that we saw that night um we'll have to circle back ask ryan a couple questions and you know we'll let you know where he is if you guys end up going and want to see him in one of these scenarios um very well done um so moving on to the actual uh lunar motel attraction uh we went in we were in a small group we were in vip so we were up front um <laughs> I've been going, like I said, to Headless Horseman for many, many years, and the Lunar Motel has always been one of my favorites. It's very hard to choose because their attractions are so well done there, and they have a lot of them, so it's hard to kind of pinpoint what I like. Um, there's not much that I don't like, to be quite honest. Um, Lunar Motel is just very, very well done. It's set up like, you know, a hotel, and their scenes are so cool. They have a lot of um, lightning going on in, like, their windows, and beautiful beautiful sets like an old abandoned dirty grungy motel and it's just aesthetically beautiful every inch of it is covered in glorious sets and their animatronics are amazing perfectly timed um they have really cool props just everything is so so well done um one of my favorite scenes is one of the bathrooms that has this large prop on it um i don't want to ruin it for you but that's pretty pretty cool um they have some cool toilet scenes um yeah their rooms are just really really well done they look like they've just been abandoned and forgot about and like something wild or a massacre was was happened there and it, it's really really cool what did you like about them i, I really liked uh in the motel scene some of like some of the rooms where you'd walk in and there'd be you know a, a couple laying in the bed you know obviously murdered or mm -hmm. dismembered or you know, cool. disfigured somehow and then you can see their luggage off in the corner or 
or yeah. you know, it's attention to detail is great. Little 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 touches like that that made it more authentic and uh, and more believable was uh, was something that, that really stuck out for me. Awesome. Is there any other sets that you enjoyed? Uh, in the in the hotel. Uh, I'm struggling to think. I, I, I'll have to take a pass on this one. I really liked the motel, though, and I really liked um, really liked their sets. Yeah, um, they had great sets. Yeah. Um, it's hard because we have 10 attractions we have to talk to. We're actually on our way to Reaper's Revenge right now to um, see the haunts again. Um, you know, we were just there two weeks ago, so we're trying to crunch this review in a short period of time. So let's just focus on um, little things in each and then we'll get going and let you guys get back to your night. Um, so the next attraction that we hit was Glutton's Slaughterhouse and Glutton's Diner. It's basically a little combination. Um, the Slaughterhouse section is first. You walk through it. Um, very well done. Uh, it's more of just like a little feature before you get into the Glutton's Diner, which is their main focus. Um, so you walk past the Glutton's Slaughterhouse and you go into the diner. The diner is amazing. Again, very well done. Large, large sets. Um, large scale. It looked like a real diner. Yeah, it looked like a real diner that was just like grotesque and and uh, like they were selling dirty, grungy, dead bodies and dead animals and it, it was just really, really cool. There was a lot of um, waitresses and um, cooks and they it was it was very well done. They have a lot of amazing animatronics in there again. Um, one of my favorite scenes is the actual diner scene that you walk into when you get in there. And then um, I really like the kitchen dead, scene. Dead patrons sitting in the booths yes. are like slumped over the counter. And then the lady yes. greets you there. And then mm -hmm. you walk behind, was it? You walk behind the counter into the kitchen. Yep, yep. And then, you know, she pops out while you're yeah. in the kitchen. Like, what are you doing? You yeah, go. very well done. Um, so, yeah, that, again, is another one of my favorites. It's... It's very well done. Their attention to detail there is ridiculous. Is there anything in particular you want to point out with that one? Um, I, I really like the, just the, the walking into the diner and seeing, really cool. you know, <laughs> plates on the counters, plates on the tables, dead people in the booths, and, and the actress in the, in the diner just did a great job at engaging everybody and setting the tone instead of just saying like welcome to my diner and yeah. then you walk by and then there's nothing else like she really sold it absolutely did a great job absolutely um the next section we're gonna go through is the evil reaping um evil reaping dark harvest corn maze um that section's always well done that kind of helps transition you into the next section um we're not gonna focus on that one too much it's great as always um but it's more of like a shorter section that transitions you into the next part um nothing negative to say at all whatsoever it's just not one that we can sit here and talk about for a really long time yeah some um, good good actors in there absolutely good actors in there i believe some uh, some good like static props and, yeah uh, oh yeah um, absolutely you know it was, it was a, a well done well done corn maze it wasn't uh you know there wasn't corn stalks like flipped no. over onto the ground that no, you it's paved tripping out. over. It was it was well done. Yeah, absolutely. And then the evil reaping transitions into Mama Rosie's Swamp Shack, which is considered one of their walkthroughs. This one was new to me. This wasn't here, I believe, when I had come three years ago or two years ago. Um this one was really, really cool. They actually constructed like a, a tree house kind of setting. You walk on these swinging, um, they're like little, oh, I don't know what those things are called. They're like little bridges that when you step on, they're like bouncy and disconnected to one another. I don't know what they're called or considered. But Think of like the bridges that the Ewoks used. In, uh, yeah, in yeah. Jedi. Like exactly. Those, those kind of bridges. Yeah. Um, they have some really cool special effects that scared the living hell out of me. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but very well done the actors in there are amazing it's kind of got like a bayou louisiana creole feel to it um maybe some voodoo um very very well done like i said that one's considered a walkthrough so it's not terribly long but what they have in there is amazing and again same thing um over the top sets over the top props animatronic special effects very well done um 
from there you go into the horseman's tomb which is amazing it is so well done oh, i really like that too. yeah that one is so well done you go through like a graveyard and you walk through legit tombs and they're like these large large structured tombs that look like they're real like we even knocked on some like are these real and they, i mean they're constructed obviously but they're that good that they look extremely real. Yeah, one of the first places we went to, it wasn't even a haunted attraction earlier this year, I think it was over the summer, mm -hmm. was Laurel Hill Cemetery in Philadelphia. Oh yeah, uh-huh. And that is a historic yeah. cemetery with a lot of people there being buried in, I believe, the, the 1800s mm -hmm. or, or even prior. And the way that they did this set- Very much like that. In, uh, in the graveyard with the big mausoleums and mm -hmm. the gravestones and there's a large uh you know looked like a statue almost like it, it looked like an an old bronze statue that had been outside and that had been aged and weathered. oh yeah it was so beautiful um and it was just really really good with, with just like with all of the other scenes that we had went through that the the houses and the hay ride were we were just very very impressed by the the design and the static props that went into it absolutely absolutely and then from there you go underground and um again very very cool very well done amazing sets while you're under there um i don't want to focus too much on the details and specifics about it but again like absolutely you need to check out headless horsemen they are so well done all their sets are amazing um I, this is personally one of my favorites because it has such a creepy like feeling to it you go through a mausoleum cemetery type setting and then you literally go into these tunnels underground and you get to experience this really cool like aesthetic and it's just phenomenal um after that part, you go into Dr. Dark's Black Spider Circus Sideshow. It's another walkthrough, so it's not terribly long, but it's 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 decently paced. You walk through for maybe about seven or eight minutes. Um, set up like a typical sideshow uh, circus setting. Um, they have clowns. They have um, freaks. You walk through, and you know they have the um, those like what what would you call them? They're like some kind of what is it like the curtain or something that has the picture and description of what you are about to see like say it's the bearded lady or like the reptile woman or whatever mm -hmm. and then they have the actor or the prop that represents that section mm -hmm. um and then the clowns are amazing in there their makeup is really really cool their acting is phenomenal they have a lot of like trick um not trick doors, but like trick sidewalks, or um, you could take the regular way around, or you could do what we did and go through like the little um, obstacles that they set up for you. Um, so that was really, really well done. Also, we enjoyed that section. Then from there, we went into um, the Nightshade Nursery and Greenhouse, which is considered one of their haunted houses. Um, it kind of has an Alice in Wonderland theme to it, um, kind of a little shop of horrors theme to it, a lot of Venus fly traps, a lot of just abandoned, um, like an old greenhouse. Yeah, like an old greenhouse that had either been abandoned or used for dark macabre practice. It, it's just very, very cool, very well done. Um, good actors in there. Um, we enjoyed that one thoroughly. There is a really really cool scene towards the end of it where they have a cold section it's like a giant freezer basically you walk into it and you see these kids that have been frozen um and there's an actor in there that looks like they've been frostbitten it, it was just it was very very cool um and that's basically the end of that section so all those animatronics are clustered together um, and then once you get out, you get into their midway section. And this is where you have access to the Fading and the Two Raven Manor. And um, also where Ryan Dutcher has his stage where he performs to entertain everybody while they're waiting on the lines. Um, his stage is closer to the Two Raven Manor than it is to the Feeding. They're very close to each other, but you'll probably get a better view of the show if you're on the line for the Two Raven versus the Feeding. Um, so these are their most, and now again, this is saying a lot because all their stuff is so over the top grand scale, but this is their two most elaborate attractions um, because they are giant houses 
that take at least 25 minutes to walk through individually um, with wall-to-wall -wall insanity, over-the-top special effects, sets, designs, props, uh, the most actors in each section, um, just so well done. Even there's stuff on the ceiling and all that. Yeah, there's, it's insane, like wall-to-wall, -wall, it's phenomenal. So, in the feeding, that one's kind of got like a evil doctor slash potential alien slash uh, mind control kind of feel to it. Like they're, they're abusing individuals to feed them to some kind of creature or um, conducting experiments on people, stuff like that. It's kind of got that feel to it. Um, all of their sets, again, are so, so well done. There are some really cool sections in there that we enjoyed. I think one of my favorites would be the section that had the giant um, water tubes or whatever that had dead bodies just like chilling in there. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was really cool and I had never seen that before. That must have been a new feature, but it's like wall to wall, both sides, like insanity. Very, very cool. Is that um, the one with the baby too? Yeah, that's the same attraction, yes. And then another one of, clearly one of Matt's favorites as well, <laughs> there is this area that you go into where it is just it's like, like an a, room. yeah, an operating room that has run amok, basically. It's just a complete disaster. And this maniacal doctor is sitting in the corner and he's holding a fetus and he's like talking to it. And like, of course, I'm a weirdo and I like to touch things as I go through haunts because I like to feel textures and I'm just weird, okay? So that's what I like to do. And I saw this baby that looked like it'd be really, really squishy. So I was like, can I touch your baby? And he was like, I don't know what he said, but I touched the baby anyway. And when I touched the baby, he looked at me like I just like completely insulted him. And he full force chucked this baby across the room. It was the best like improv that I have ever seen. And Matt and I just looked at each other like, <laughs> and he was he got just, a good bounce too. Yeah, it like, and then I went to go pick up the baby. I'm like, oh my God, should I go pick up the baby? Like, I don't know what to do. I literally went to scoop up the baby. And as I was going to bend down, he like ran at me full force and like, don't touch my baby. Like freaking out. And I was like, oh, this poor baby. <laughs> Whatever. But it was like really cool and very interactive. It was fun. Um, so yeah, those are probably my favorite parts about the, um, the feeding. I, in general, it's such a well done constructed house. Um, like everything else there. Um, Matt, is there anything in particular you want to talk about in there? Um, now, I might be mixing up a couple here, but was that the one where they had the, the, the mirror illusions where it looks like there's a very long hallway? I think both of them have something like that, but I think it was that one. Yeah. I think maybe. I, I really like those because it gave more depth to it. If, yeah. If that is one, and, and I got a couple of the things when we were going over some of our, our highlights mm -hmm. earlier, I got a couple of the things mixed up. The there two, are so many attractions, ravens. it's hard to keep it all straight, and, honestly, with 10 yeah. of them. <laughs> but and, yeah. And uh, I, I really liked the feeding because it, it was, you know, we were doing really, really good so far, and then they just ratcheted it up a little bit more in terms of, in terms of props, in terms of actors. Mm -hmm. Um so good and i believe there was even one room where they're like i was saying there's stuff on the ceiling where there's oh yeah an alien that was like coming down i, mm -hmm. I think was it uh yep. from like, you're about to go into a door and he's yep. like, leaning right yep. down there mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of good stuff a lot of good stuff in there and and everything just like in all of the other attractions we were talking about the this the scale for the rooms is very large mm -hmm. uh Absolutely. the ceilings seem very high almost higher than they could possibly be Absolutely. in some rooms and everything feels life size, and and it just it's so so. Scene where you like walk over a bridge and um. What? We park in here. Yeah, I guess so. Their Reapers is very very busy tonight. That's awesome. Um. So yeah, um, that one is very very well done. They have a lot of big elaborate sets in there. Um, we just got to Reapers Revenge. Yeah go through the the metal detector take all the metal stuff out of your pockets you know and and they were they were really really efficient and really professional about it 
Um, even, you know, when you're walking in from the parking lot, the, the guy's kind of listing off things that you should not be bringing in. He said, you know, leave your, your guns, your knives in the car. Don't bring that in here. You won't need that in here or anything like that. And, and uh, it, it, it made it fun. It made what's normally could, could be viewed as a, a monotonous or a, you know, a tedious part of the experience more fun and more enjoyable. Um, they had a cool hearse when we were walking in as well.